it's not. Okay, great. Hi, I'm Lauren, and today I'm going to be discussing uh, database and user interface uh, development for study of Atlantic codfish. Um, so just to give some background, uh, Steve Codron, uh, he's a professor here at UMass Dartmouth in the marine biology and <clears throat> marine science and technology, and Allison Frey, who's a graduate student in the same school. Um, they've been involved in this study since uh, November of 2019, and they've been working with other organizations to basically um, study the movement patterns of codfish in uh, the Cox Ledge area. Um, and so why they're interested in this area is because uh, there's going to be development of offshore wind uh, turbines in this area. And so basically, um, Cox Ledge is um, a major area where codfish go to spawn. And so in the spawning season, uh, codfish use noise to communicate and also construction for this development has noise. So you can see how that could interfere with the codfish spawning season. Um, so what Allie has done is she has gone to Cox Ledge and she has uh, tagged 82 fish so far with um, transmitters. You can see her tagging them up there. And so each transmitter has a different frequency. So that's how we can tell the uh, difference between each fish. And so also um, what's listening to these frequencies are uh, passive receivers that are in the water. And so they sit there and they listen for the fish to be in their acoustic range. So here's a map of where the receivers are. So they're 19 miles southeast of Block Island. Um, they're the red dots and they're labeled with uh, letters. Uh, the dark blue is um, Boehm's. Uh, lease area. Boehm is a government agency um, and they lease out areas for um, energy development. And so within that area, there is the orange box in there and that's the South Fork project. And that's going to be where the development is for the wind turbines. Um, so that's why the receivers are all that right next to that orange box. Okay, so I just talked a lot about codfish. So now where does a data scientist fit into this? Um, so Allie goes to these receivers every few months and she um, gets a USB from it and it has a CSV, CSV file in it. And it has um, timestamps of when uh, the fish was spotted in their acoustic range. Um, and so she has all this data. And so they kind of need someone to um, organize it, put it in a database and uh, get a data visualization for them. Um, so this was kind of the, <clears throat> their, their main goal. They wanted something that looked like this. Um, it has on the vertical axis, all the different fish that they've tagged and it's a time series plot. So uh, whenever they're spotted in the acoustic range, um, it shows up at, uh, on the time series plot. Um, so my goal is to be able to give them this was to incorporate a user interface because I wouldn't want Allie, who um, is a marine science um, graduate student, to have to do any code and also help them with the database and then obviously give them a data visualization, um, ideally a little bit more eye appealing than the one that I just showed. Um, <clears throat> the tools that I'm going to do to create an application for them is that I use HTML, which is the um, uh, coding language for a web page, CSS, which is the styling for HTML, uh, PHP, which is the language I use for the data handling. I use JavaScript for um, user interaction and uh, the data visualization. And then SQL is the language for uh, database. And then Hostinger was the web host that I used, which I'll <clears throat> explain all of this a little more. Um, so this is kind of a high view of my application um, and I'm going to explain it to you guys kind of the way that I developed it. So first I um, saw all the data and so I realized that we need a database for this. Um, so <clears throat> there's a screenshot of um, the data that comes in from the receivers. So you have uh, day and time, you have the receiver that um, she collected the data from and then we also have the transmitter, so which fish it um, transmitted, and then the station name. 
And so I created a uh, database in PHP MyAdmin, which is a MySQL database. Um, and I created a table, I called it Fishbangs, and I put the attributes from this uh, Excel sheet into there, or at least the ones that were usable. Um, so next, I kind of went to the net other side of the spectrum and created the user interface. Um, so this is a screenshot of it. Um, it's pretty simple. You uh, choose a file that you want to import, uh, the tech detection data, and then you press import to import it into the uh, database. Um, okay, so now I'm going to discuss the API. Um, so I have the database, I have the user interface, so how do those kind of go together? Um, an API is kind of the middle ground between uh, the back end code of the user interface and uh, the database. Um, and I use PHP to kind of handle the data. Um, so basically, it gets a connection with uh, the database. You need like the server name, the database name, um, database um, username, and the password. Um, and as I put it in there, I um, did some cleaning up, like I separated the time and date, put it in a good format, and then I also only selected the columns that I needed. Um, I also filtered out only codfish data because there are actually other uh, animals tagged in the water that um, the receiver picked up on. And uh, lastly, <clears throat> I made sure that all the rows were distinct in the database um, because uh, just in case you maybe put the same file in uh, more than once. Um, and also she had said that um, some of the data might be in, uh, similar in another data file. Um, then just to kind of discuss the back end code to kind of um, put everything together. Um, so like I said earlier, I use HTML to um, construct um, this application, um, CSS style it, and then uh, JavaScript for the visualization. Um, and so basically um, from the database, um, the API takes um, the data from the database and then the API sends it to JavaScript and then JavaScript has the data to be able to um, make a visualization out of it. Okay, and then to show you the visualization that I did. Um, so basically it looks very similar to the one that they gave me. Um, on the vertical axis, there are the fish, um, it's time series and um, it shows up when they were um, in the receiver's acoustic range. Um, so as I was making this um, application, um, I was using a, a local uh, host, um, XAMP, and to be able to test it out. But for Ali and Steve or whomever to be able to use it wherever, whenever, um, I needed to get a uh, website host. Um, and I am using Hostinger, um, and it's a really nice um, application to use because I could just upload my code to there. And they also supported PHP my admin, um, so I could um, work with the database right on there. Um, so just to discuss some problems that came up. Um, so originally I was using Post uh, Chris SQL, um, and I ended up changing to MySQL um, just because there were more resources on MySQL, um, at least between with MySQL working with PHP. Um, software bugs, which kind of just go hand in hand with coding. Um, <clears throat> transferring the data from the API to, to JavaScript, I had, I spent a lot of time on that. Um, it was just really just going from one function and API. It was, I believe the function was JSON and code. Um, and it was really just formatting issues, just getting it from one um, to the other language. Um, Another thing was that there was a lot of backend code, so I kind of wasn't able to show them the end product till the end of the semester, which can be a little risky just in case they didn't like it. Um, fortunately, they did, so it was okay. Um, lastly, um, I originally was using the web host, um, 00 web hosts. Um, unfortunately, it kind of had limits with the amount of space for the database and also the amount of queries you could run in it. Um, so we kept running into that, and so we ended up getting the premium version of uh, Hostinger. Um, just going to demo it for you guys. Okay, so here you choose the file. No, and then you press import. 
and then it comes up and I'll throw a few more in there. and tells you that it's successfully imported. Um, if it wasn't successfully imported, um, there's probably a connection between uh, the API or this in the database. Um, and then you can put your mouse over it to see um, the range of date. This one was September 16th to September 22nd. Um, there's also some other things over here. You can view it in full screen, you can print it. Um, so yeah, and then I have one more slide. Um, maybe just some future work. Um, I do have to take a data visualiz visualization class next semester. So um, I know there's a project involved. So um, I was thinking maybe to even um, help them out further and maybe just make more data visualizations, maybe put some filters in it for the receiver that um, the data was uh, referring to. Um, and then there's also a glider that is um, picking up some data and so potentially analyze that too as well. That's it. There's, there's dead fish that are still picking. So that would be something that I could analyze. All right. So, so, so if, it, if, if there's a fish that hasn't moved in a while, we could consider it dead. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, I use, I think it was high charts was the name of it. Oh, okay. So yeah, it was really difficult to find like a bar chart those time series, but yeah. high charts had it. Um, that was in the PHP. Um, so basically in the PHP kind of language, um, you use SQL in it. Um, so like, you know, I only extracted certain, um, certain columns, um, and then, yeah, so it was kind of mixed with PHP and then SQL in there. Other questions? All right, not with the